Next up on the list of balance manifestos, we have the Eldritch Altar Manifesto. Now, this is talking about how there is kind of this current theme of ways that people farm maps where they just rush in, they try to kill the boss to make sure that the altars don't give you like the boss mods, and then you go for very specific altar mods, and it's kind of just this maybe slightly problematic way, uh, GGG things at least, of farming maps. So in this manifesto, they are going to be making some relatively decent changes here. There is a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, and a little bit of maybe not enough. There's a couple things that I really think with just a little bit more tweaking could be absolutely excellent. We'll talk about some of that here in just a moment. However, remember that if you're enjoying this video, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos. And without further ado, let's get into it. So here in the 3.20 Balance Manifesto Eldritch Altars, in the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, which is the name, um, I'm not exactly sure what that name makes me think. It makes me think that maybe we're gonna get some kind of like weird rogue-like thing that we gotta delve into and figure out. Maybe something like that, we'll see. They're making a number of changes to Eldritch Altars, specifically to the rewards that we get from them. Now, if you don't know what Eldritch Altars are, these are the altars of the two different new bosses that were introduced recently. We've got the Eater of Worlds and the Exarch. So these are those red and blue altars that you see throughout maps as you go into higher tier maps. There's a bunch of different ways that you can influence these altars and get different things out of them. However, one of the main strategies that people were using was something like going into Jungle Valley where you don't actually have a boss spawn until you go and spawn the spider boss. And then you would specifically just choose all of these modifiers that give you things like scarabs, or maybe it's giving you extra quantity depending on how many altars that you've gotten, which can influence other things in the map. However, GGG felt this to be maybe a little bit oppressive. So they're making some changes. They are specifically changing the rewards, the monster packs that spawn, and the incentives for rushing to map bosses before completing the rest of the map. Another interesting thing that they're doing is they are making it so that there is a chance for Maven witness map bosses to drop an awakened gem, specifically the ones that the Maven can drop herself. The overarching aim of these changes is to try to reach a point where the choice between running Maven witness maps or Eldritch influence maps is closer in value while still retaining the gameplay feeling you've come to expect from Eldritch altars. Now, I don't feel that they went far enough with the Maven stuff, but uh, we have a TLDR here which is kind of nice so we'll actually be able to just go through some of the bullet points here instead of sitting and reading through a whole bunch of stuff so one big thing that they've done is they made it so that the altars no longer reward with things that are maybe some stuff that people don't really care about things like gems influence items unique items and maps these are much less interesting rewards that people would get from these kinds of things no one except maybe ruthless people are going to care about gems and they'll probably never be able to make it to a point where you have altars for influence items anyways um, we've got influence items, which the influence items that they did drop are pretty useless most of the time. You typically use the currency to roll those items. The base items that drop are worth almost nothing. Unique items, kind of a dime a dozen these days. They don't really matter that much. Um, there's a couple good unique items, which is cool. Maybe some of those new unique jewels will be kind of interesting. Or maps. For the most part, people don't really care about maps except very, very early on in the league. So... Hopefully this isn't like a big nerf to early map sustain, but we will never know until we get there because GGG tweaks like the map drop rate and the drop rate of currency and everything else all the time. They said that they tweak these numbers. They just never tell you that they tweak these numbers. So another interesting thing is that the basic currency reward has been split up into specific currency rewards. This means that you're no longer going to get just like, oh, well, you know, you're going to drop, have like a chance to drop us some alteration orbs or some augments or some regals or maybe a chaos here or there. Instead, it's going to say something like map boss drops three vol orbs instead of it saying like drops three basic currency items. This will give you a little bit better of an idea if you should choose that option because it's like, well, I need vol orbs. I might as well choose that option instead of being like three basic currency items. Oh, thanks for the three armor or scraps, bro. On top of that, altars are no longer going to offer some things like orbs of augmentation, transmutation, blacksmith sweatstones, and armor scraps, etc. So like I said before, these are no longer going to be offered, which is pretty cool because these are pretty much much useless after about a day in the league so yeah currency drop weights are still adhered to for these rewards with the removal of basic rewards you'll see good currency a lot more often so that should be a positive however there are a couple more changes here scarabs and divination cards have also been split into specific rewards for example rather than simply divination cards you'll now see things like divination cards which reward unique jewelry this is how things work in a lot of other places so they're kind of just like modernizing the newest system in the game and they're also making it so that they will be split so they're exclusive to one altar type so you can target farm those kinds of rewards now, because of this, scarabs are going to be offered a lot less, but they don't want them to be too scarce as a whole. So to help balance this out, they are finally, after all these years, adding at least rusted scarabs to the core drop pool. 
This is excellent. This is awesome. I'm really happy about this. They're also adding in a vendor recipe where they can three to one up to the gilded scarabs. This is going to make it so much nicer to be able to farm it just basically anything, right? Scarabs should, as long as the drop rates are okay, which I we don't know that they're okay yet, but as long as this drop rate of these rusted scarabs is good, this should be significantly easier. Like people don't have to worry about, you know, just random like high-end farmers getting all of these scarabs or having to go for them. It should just be everybody finds them. So there should be a good amount of these. Now let's hope that that's the case. And let's hope that GGG is lenient with the amount of scarabs that are going to be dropping in the core drop pool. Also, the amount of influence packs that are spawned by altars has been reduced by 33%, but the chance of influence altars spawning has been increased by 50% to offset this. So they say this a little bit later in some of the stuff down below, but basically they're trying to make it so that you don't always just get a specific amount of mobs or influence spawns in every single map. It's gonna kind of be like a variable amount. At the high end, it's going to be what it previously was, but but at the low end, it's going to be a little bit less. They're also trying to make it so that when they do have like boss drop items from the altars that they are actually worth something. They've redesigned the Wrath of the Cosmos keystone and they've changed it so that they only apply to their respective influence. So that means that people who were taking both of the keystones on either side of the Atlas, it is a nerf most likely in drops for you. However, I don't think that most people were taking both of those nodes because it really does make it quite difficult. However, when we're talking about adding a chance for Maven Witness map bosses to drop an Awakened Gem, there's one thing that sticks out in my mind that I think with this change, you could actually make it worthwhile to farm Maven Witnessed bosses, because right now it's absolutely not worth it. And the reason for that is that typically people try to farm either one or only a few type of maps at any given time, right? We're talking like maybe two or three different maps because like the ones that are gonna be connected to whatever your current map is. The issue with the Maven is that you have to do 10 different map bosses and you have to witness all of those map bosses to be able to even get the Maven to show up and witness, right? You have to do a different map every single time just to even get her to show up there and you have to do a different one every single time. And on top of that, there is no way to basically like save up progress on this. You can't witness like 60 map bosses at any given time. So there's two ways that I can think of that they could fix this. One, there needs to be some kind of keystone maybe or something in like the Maven area of the Atlas that makes it so that if you are fighting a boss that is already Maven influenced, you can still influence that boss and it'll maybe just give you a random boss in your Maven encounter and like your Maven like 10 way. That could be something that could help here if you could make it so that you could just farm that one two or three maps that would make it significantly more competitive with altars in general however the other issue is that there is no way to save it up so two different ways that you could do this is you could simply make it so that if that was the case you could farm up more than just 10 bosses for the maven at any given time or they could make it so that those little like maps that you drop, right? Like the little uh, invitations that you get from the Maven, maybe instead of them just being a random invitation, they could drop similar to how like the Alva Temple drops or how you could take the Alva Temple where you set it up then maybe after the 10th boss that the Maven witnesses, it drops the actual like invitation that has all of those bosses in it. And you could either sell that or you could save it and you could run them all at one time, like run like 10 of them in a row or something like that. I feel like with just those little tiny small small changes, you could make farming Maven Witness map bosses substantially more competitive compared to Alters, because I feel that even with these changes right now, it's still probably not going to be enough to make Maven influence stuff worthwhile, because I can imagine that these Awakened Gems probably aren't going to drop that often, and it's going to be frustrating to get the Maven to even witness a map. It's going to slow down how quickly you can move through these maps and how quickly you can farm. And we all know that time is money after all. So most of this down here is just a more in-depth explanation of everything I already went over. Like I said, there are a couple small little things in here, like the thing that I talked about, how it was like, it can be anywhere from 20 to 60 packs per map instead of it always being 60 like it was before. And they talk a little bit about the Wrath of the Cosmos keystone, where it only affects influenced altars for Searing Exarch. And now each altar has a 50% chance for an additional upside, but altars with an additional upside will have their downside effect increased by 100%. So this should make it so that the difficulty is a little bit less intense, but the rewards are also a little bit less intense. And you can't double dip on these. Like you can't have Eldritch Gaze and 
Wrath of the Cosmos at the same time. And they do say that this is explicitly a nerf if you are scaling rewards from both of these. And that is going to be it for the video. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping support every single one of these videos. If you're interested in my Patreon, check out in the description down below. There are some cool rewards and stuff that you can get for the different tiers. But as for the manifesto, um, I'm not super excited about this one. I'm not like super upset about this one. I think that I would be excited if they made a couple of those small changes to like the Maven farming stuff that I talked about before, because I feel that the like 10 way invitation really is just lackluster. And these changes that they're making it to where, you know, you can get like an awakened gem from these bosses is really not going to do enough unless that drop rate is really, really high. And I kind of doubt that it's going to be really high. So we'll see. They said that they are open to feedback on these kinds of things. So hopefully we, you know, can push some of that feedback, make it so that maybe the Maven farming, the, the Maven witnessing stuff is a little bit better. Because even with these changes, I still don't think that it's going to be close enough. So remember, boys, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.